You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com Hey everybody and welcome to episode 28 of The Frankie Files. Today is Second Tuesday and I usually reserve this for the topic of sexuality in society. I'm going to take a different approach today to the topic of survivors. How do we head from victim to survivor in recovering from what happened? One dominant specialist on this topic is a thinker in his 90s who's had a lot to say in this area of societal issues. Robert J. Lifton, and Lifton is spelled L-I-F as in father, T-O-N. I learned about Lifton from a podcast episode of Influence Continuum by Steve Hassan. The episode is called Dr. Robert J. Lifton on Current Events and the Importance of Survivors Telling Their Story. That's the part that got my attention. I didn't see a number of the episode, uh, but the date is January 12th, 2022. I found it uh, on Apple and Spotify under Steve Hassan Influence Continuum. Though Lifton covers many topics as an author through the years and lecturer, he also is in several interviews on YouTube. This one episode on Spotify was of particular interest to me because he speaks of how a victim turns into a survivor and the simple steps that lead to the transformation we go through. Today, I hope to encourage some of you to tell your story that there is a reason to tell as much or as little of it as possible in order to raise the awareness and for prevention of this type of trauma on future generations. I'll target us sex assault victims to head towards the state of mind and behavior of a survivor. It's a big step for us victims of any type of sexual assault, manipulation, slavery, or coercion. Starting to talk about it may take decades. So for you listeners who are not survivors, imagine hiding such an awful secret for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And people do. I speak from experience. And it's sort of like having a bullet embedded in your body. Somewhere it could give you massive problems if it moves around. It's not been removed because it's a risk. Maybe it wasn't safe to remove it, and it seemed like the risk of removing the bullet is higher than just leaving it buried. But it's a risk, and the bullet could move around on you, even poison your bloodstream, even affect your health long-term, very long-term, and other complications. I liken holding this type of toxic emotional and physical trauma in to having a bullet lodged in your body. Your body cannot feel right until it's successfully been taken out. We have to, at some point, remove the bullet. Not everyone speaks publicly. Some speak anonymously. And remember, there are many levels to doing it. So consider this. Steve Haston, the host of the podcast I'm going to dive into today, had in his past a seriously quick indoctrination and deprogramming after almost two years in the Moonies, also known as the Unification Church. They're a religious militia church based in South Korea imported to parts of the world, including the United States of America. They've been in the news due to the Abe shooting in Japan recently. The rescue by deprogrammers of Steve Hassan from Mooney's was thanks to quick-acting concerned parents who'd been cut out of his life. And I encourage you to learn more about Steve Hassan on his Twitter handle, which is called at Cult Expert. In this episode of his podcast, The Influence Continuum, he has on the man who got him started in psychology studies and practice his hero and mentor, and that really shows throughout the interview. Lifton's books include titles such as Death in Life, Survivors of Hiroshima, The Nazi Doctors, Medical Killing and the Psychology of Genocide, Revolutionary Immortality, 
Thought Reform and the Psychology of Totalism, a study of brainwashing in China, History in Human Survival, The Protean Self, Human Survival in an Age of Fragmentation, The Things We Cannot Say, Boundaries, a quick bio on his page, robertjlifton.wordpress.com states, Robert J. Lifton is an American psychiatrist and author whose subject has been Holocaust, mass violence, and renewal in the 20th and 21st centuries. Lifton has written 24 books and edited eight others. He's been a research psychiatrist and teacher at the Washington School of Psychiatry, Yale University, Harvard University, the City University of New York, and Columbia University. He lives in Wellfleet, Massachusetts, and New York City with his partner, the, the political theorist and writer, Nancy Rosenblum. I believe his name is one we should know as survivor, especially of thought reform and coercion. So I'll take this in order of how it's discussed by Lifton on Hassan's podcast, based on my notes from listening to the Influence Continuum podcast January 12th, 2022. These are the things that hit me out of this broadcast. One of my first notations was Lifton mentioning victims losing reality. Oh, yeah, that's part of the indoctrination, which happens in totalist cults and other extreme programming settings. Cults and brainwashing tactics work on disorienting us right away. Our reality is challenged and a new reality is fed to us when we're in highly suggestible states, such as fear, terror, bliss, extreme joy, or anxiety. Lifton worked in the arena of studying Chinese brainwashing. He also worked with victims of Hiroshima. So sex assault survivors, let's apply these next words to ourselves. Lifton states, an ordinary response to extreme trauma is death anxiety. Nobody is immune. It's part of the human condition. We don't know where we go when we die. And it's made us strong in an evolutionary way. It's given us symbolic immortality. The role of survivors, he continues, is crucial in this struggle. Survivors emerge in the forefront of that renewal, the renewal after destruction, end quote. So interesting. That's why I love hearing people who've lived through trafficking, war, child sex abuse, incest, severe depression, neglect, suicide, and menticide. These people have lived through this stuff, have gone where few have gone before, and survived. Survivors have looked into the abyss and lived to tell about it. The most of value are the survivors who were kids and dare to expose how they were trafficked, kept silent, propagandized, lied to. Now, even in parents, sometimes parents in these cases enable the abusers, exposing them. How parents, family, and predators enable life traffickers and groomers conspired to let it continue in some cases. These kids lived through that hopelessness and are trying to educate society on the human condition. Moving on, Lifton then goes on to answer some of Hassan's questions on doubling and disassociation. To paraphrase, it's evidenced by the Nazi doctors who had their day jobs making selections for death in the Hitler internment camps. Then, on the weekends, the doctors were ordinary husbands, fathers, with their families. Lifton goes on to describe cultist doubling and grounded proteanism. Comment. One of the things I often think about is that one of the most dangerous parts of surviving CSA or being in a secret cult is the ability to hide strange things from others in society. The inching into being comfortable being so secretive. It's not a good thing to do that. It splits us and our idea of ourselves in two right away, leaving a gap, a wound for manipulation by unsavory characters to split us and justify everything sort of like serial killers do. It's this weird type of adjustment the mind does to compensate for knowing it's doing something wrong. You're listening to The Frankie Files. 
FrankieFilesPodcast.com. Lifton then went on to talk about something I could really understand firsthand. As someone who was initiated by age 10 into a cult as a member with a new name and identity and changed nicknames after that several times through my life while moving around the country to various USA states, I really latched on to this next truth because, as y'all know, the classic abuse pattern is for us victims to move around a lot and not be able to get too close to people due to lack of trust. Lifton says, you can't just keep changing. You need a degree of stability. That is needed to make progress. And that's so true. We were often injured by the community in a cult. So being a part of any community can be incredibly daunting. Why would we expose ourselves to that bullying and humiliation again? Being alone is so much easier. But that can be hard too. Repeat, Lifton says, you can't just keep changing. You need a degree of stability that is needed to make progress. End quote. When your identity is so messed with, it can be confusing. Survivors, imagine a life when your identity and name are the same from birth. Your belief system is the same. Your family and your support groups of friends always there for you. Your leave vacations, a stable job or career, and zero paranoia that a group you left is going to destroy you wherever you go. None of that to deal with. I know. Survivors, it's hard to imagine. Things are so messy for cult and CSA survivors. The stability we lack should not be underrated. Part of being a victim involves running from anything that resembles your trauma. That robs you of the stability needed to just set down roots and begin to heal, build, and grow. And not because you're some outlaw or drug addict. Nope. Just because you decided to leave a group that was draining you and abusing you. This is what forces you, thrusts you, into being on the outskirts of society. And it's not that convenient a place to be. Lifton is so right. At some point, we have to, as he states, get a degree of stability to make progress. I hope that you guys can all make that happen for yourselves or that you already have. As the conversation turns, they start touching on totalism. Lifton says to Hassan that, Thought reform is far from the only part of totalism. Social media are confused. In essence, it's easy to distribute misinformation. End quote. And it is so easy to distribute misinformation and propaganda online. I covered this a little in episode 27 recently. What's unique online is that it's driven by algorithms at the speed of instant, which are highly restrictive and misleading. I want to repeat for the purpose of diving into what Lifton said, uh, some stuff that I looked into last episode on 27. It's easy to distribute misinformation, he says. Okay, well, I was at conciliantsproject.org, and they said social media sites curate content using algorithms that optimize for virility, to keep eyes on sight. Attention drives ad revenues, so anything that arrests attention is valued. Okay, so my comment, the bear eating a fish is going to win over a lecture. Society is valuing the stupid, the asinine, and the insane over anything constructive like activism or survivor support. It really shows this computation when you scroll through TikTok or Instagram. The bar is low. I mean, arresting attention can be literally anything catchy. Quality not needed. Just going viral is needed to feed the ad revenue. Continuing from conciliantsproject.org. This business model of attention capture results in algorithms that curate content based on qualities that make them likely to prioritize the delivery of propaganda such as catchiness, emotional intensity, and confirmation of held beliefs. The devastating result 
is that information warfare is driven inadvertently by the business models of the companies that produce and profit from our basic social technologies. Computational Propaganda Computational propaganda unfolds in the context of 24-7 screen access, through which a great deal of identity formation now takes place. With this amount of time and investment in digital media that is overrun with manipulative interactions, limbic hijacking can turn into limbic overload. Seeing 10 propaganda billboards on your way to work is significantly different from engaging with 30 micro-targeted HD video ads on your way to work. Many of them deeply emotionally manipulative and conceptually complex. Here's a document in the article which details how AI via the internet is delivering propaganda to us. It's entitled, Tech Trends Escalating Culture Wars, parenthesis, manipulating users for the purpose of advertising. Bullet, the inability to distinguish commercial from non-commercially motivated information and AI sock puppets from real humans inability to distinguish honest information from intentional misinformation for strategic advantage, decreased message length, increased message frequency, inability to track all message sources, information overload, faster forgetting, less reflection. The absence of shared overarching meta narrative that could potentially reconcile conflicting information and perspectives. Escalating emotional intensity of information, sanctimony, outgroup, antipathy, antipathy, normalization of weaponized language, lies, slander, censorship. I highly recommend this site, which I've bookmarked, conciliantsproject.org. The end of propaganda. So when Lifton says it's easy to distribute misinformation, he's not kidding. That is happening in an automated way. And AI algorithms decide that. It's too fast for humans to even do in real time. Though they do create the formulas. But let me double back and hover on a couple points from this article. Decreased message length so attention spans going way down, increased message frequency, spamming, and spam-like behavior, inability to track all message sources, anonymous indoctrination, information overload, and that leads to the brain's faster forgetting and less reflection, the absence of shared overarching meta-narrative that could potentially reconcile conflicting information and perspectives. In other words, there's no reason. The fact that we're stunned with overstimulation decimates reason. That's now the new norm. You can't even gather your thoughts with the amount of information overload coming through. Ever notice how fast your mind's going after a scrolling session? You were shown thousands of impressions and you didn't even have time to process them in your brain, but they went through. That's the new norm and it's pretty dangerous. I'm not an alarmist, someone who's just trying to deal with conditions that diminish reasonable thinking and debilitate logic. And it's a battle because AI is doing it faster and more efficiently. We don't have a chance but to unplug whenever possible. So Lifton is warning and is aware of pitfalls of social media, pretty important. But the entire basis of survival for humans truly depends upon people speaking up and warning others of the pitfalls of being human. In his book, Death in Life, Survivors of Hiroshima, the book cover describes the book as, in Japan, hibakusha means the people affected by the explosion, specifically the explosion of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima in 45. In this classic study, winner of the 69 National Book Award in Science, Lifton studies the psychological effects of the bomb on 90,000 survivors. He sees this analysis as providing a last chance to understand and to be motivated to avoid nuclear war. 
This compassionate treatment is a significant contribution to the atomic age. I would like to read that book. I haven't yet. Like this great event, millions of people have been affected by cults. It's no wonder to me he moved from this type of study to the abomination that is brainwashing and thought reform. This intellect clearly sees the catastrophe that brainwashing and cult indoctrination has on minds of generations. He's seen it being in his 90s. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com I'm just getting introduced to Lifton and will be reading his books. It can be a bit overwhelming doing reading on these topics because it's not just esoteric for me. The trauma is lived and sometimes studying it makes me relive it. I can't help it. I believe a lot of you hosts of cult podcasts know and go through this. Let me know what your thoughts are. The brain gets set off, triggered, but I know how to control the emotions or to mitigate the damage. It just takes a while. Part of it is learning to control the amygdala fight or flight response and learning non-reaction. Getting to the point where memories and triggers don't dominate my day while doing this type of work is a process. I'm six months in. It's not that easy, but with 12 years of memories in a cult, yeah, this can get dicey. The connection of great minds that I am getting is worth at this point. I'm happy to do it. Check out Steve Hassan's podcast. Check out Robert J. Lifton's books. Very applicable. While he touches on both political and societal issues, I feel that much of the cult thinking and recovery from trauma is his focus. Why move forward? And he answers those questions. Why become the survivor? Because at least our trauma can serve as a cautionary tale. That gives me great solace that someone can learn from my pain. That's what keeps me going in this new project. Prevention. There's an announcement I'd like to share. Please note there's a a group now. A few of us started on Reddit. It's just dedicated to cult podcasts. And it's called r slash cult podcasts. The word podcast is plural, cult podcasts. It's just a discussion group. It's for discovering new podcasts, getting new episodes, the word out, get new guests or advertisers. It's finally a place we won't hear the words, do not post episodes or engage in self-promotion. Reverse that. In the new discussion group, r slash cult podcasts, post your podcast link once per week. It's encouraged. There's about 70 plus podcasts that I found that are on cults, and I'm going to read them here in a minute. The group on Reddit has a photo of this list I'm about to read. I recently made it using multiple sources online, and I hope it helps. Here we go in alphabetical order 30 for 30, parenthesis, Bikram Yoga, a little bit culty, chasing enlightenment, coffee and cults. Crimes, Killers, Cults, and Beer. Cult and Overcoming. Cult, Paracast. Cult, Cryptids, and Conspiracies. Cult, Faves. Cult Leader, Podcast. Cult, Meeting, Podcast. Cult, Podcast. Cult, Podcast Show. Cult, Talk. The Cult, Vault, Podcast. Cults, Crimes, and Cabernet Podcasts. Cult, Crimes, and Conspiracies Podcast. Cults, Killers, and Thrillers, a true crime podcast. Cults of Our Lives, Dear Franklin Jones. Escaping Nexium, that's N-X, capital I, V-M. Frankie Files Podcast, this one. Generation Cults, Growing Up Mooney, How to Heretic, I Got the Hell Out, Indoctrination Podcast, Nation is capitalized, Join Our Cult Podcast, Killers and Cults True Crime Blog and Podcast, Kitchen Table Cult, Coup and the Gang, Coup is spelled K-U, 
last pod on the left, leaving Eden. Let's talk about sex, S-E-C-T-S, with Sarah Steele. Madness, Madness podcast. Microphone therapy podcast. Mom, I joined a cult. New wave cult podcast. A cult, cult podcast. Oh, cult podcast. Oh, no, Ross and Carrie. On the Edge with Andrew Gold. Plus one, post-purity podcast, pretend radio, Scientology fair game, socially accepted cult podcast, sounds like a cult, surreal talk, sword and scale, tales from a cult, telltales, terrible people doing terrible things, the cult cafe podcast, the cult podcast, The Gateway, Teal Swan. The Influence Continuum, Steve Hassan. The Modesty Files. The Not Occult Podcast. The One True Way. The Reclamation. The Truth That Heals. Transmission from Jonestown. Trust Me Podcast. Uncover Season 1. Unfinished Short Creek. Was I in a cult? White lies. You must remember this. If you're listening and I've read your podcast name, please go join and post in the group on Reddit called Our Cult Podcasts. We all want more information and to share that information in the effort to educate people what cults are and how to help people leaving cults or stop them from going in the first place. This is what it's all about. Thank you for listening. Until next time. If you would like information on cults in the news, please join my new substack, frankietees.substack.com. I'll be launching the use of a new hashtag, Occupy Cults. Occupy Cults certainly speaks for itself. It's time that we get the word out about the damage these cults do financially, emotionally, psychologically, sexually, generationally. And that's part of what prompted me to begin speaking out. The hashtag Occupy Cults should be placed on anything you want the awareness raised on. I notified the press my list that I use, and I hope that it will help them find stories to raise the awareness and to disseminate this information even more widely than it is now. So check out the hashtag Occupy Cults. Wear it on a t-shirt. Chalk it on the neighborhood. Get the word out. Occupy Cults means just that. Pay attention to what's going on. Those survivors who are trying to speak out need your support. Check out Occupy Cults, the hashtag. The Frankie Files podcast is researched, written, recorded, and edited by me, Frankie Tees. The Frankie Files.